Okay. So I just want to do a really quick run through of the topic review guide, uh, just to highlight a couple of things to make sure everybody's on the same page here. Um, so obviously the stuff that's been highlighted in red, um, those terms or ideas will not be on on the evaluation next week. So you can, don't have to worry putting them. Don't waste any space on, on your formula card or any time reviewing them. Um, We've talked about most, we've done almost all these activities. I think we've actually only done like demonstrations one through three or four. We'll do a couple more in class or we have done them. This is, I'm recording this on Thursday afternoon. So for forums, the other forums, you'll get your demonstrations tomorrow morning. I think probably this is the key stuff right here. Um, let's take a look at these skills and questions. Can you calculate the density of an object? And your answer should be definitely, yes. Most deaf, you can. Um, Sometimes some students are a little confounded if I ask them to find the mass of an object after given the density um, or even having to look up the density in the reference page and then also having been given the volume, you can solve for mass and vice versa. If I give you the, if I give you the volume, you look up the density on the reference page, you can then solve for the mass. So keep that in mind. We can definitely, sol we can definitely um, calculate the weight of an object because we all have a formula weight equals mass in kilograms times gravity. And um, we know that weight and mass are related because weight is the mass of an object times the force of gravity um, working on it or pulling on it. We also know that the mass typically does not change due to location, so the mass of this iPad that I'm recording this on will have the same, it'll be the same here on Earth as it would on the moon. However, its weight would be different. Um, the force of gravity on the Earth is about five times greater than the force of gravity on, on the moon. So this, this iPad would have, would have, would weigh five times less up on the moon. Can you explain flow rate? Can you calculate flow rate? So remember that flow rate is the volume divided by the time. Um, you never have to convert the volume units, but remember that time always has to be in seconds. Um, how does temperature affect the flow rate? Typically, if as you increase the temperature, as you increase increase the temperature of a solution of a fluid, that will lead to decreased bonds between the particles. So therefore, they will slide faster. They will flow faster. In other words, they will have less viscosity. If you cool a fluid. Typically, the colder the fluid is, the slower the particles are built are moving, the higher the bonds between the particle, so your rates of adhesion and cohesion are going up. Therefore, the, the, the fluid has become much more viscous and it will flow slower. So I think we just knocked out that one and that one. Um, can you explain why objects float or sink in water using density? So you just need to know that simple relationship that if an object is more dense than water, greater density than 1.0, gram per milliliter, it's going to sink. If its density is one or less, it's going to float. Can you explain why objects float or sink in water by comparing their weight and their buoyant force? You sure can. So if I don't give you the weight, maybe I give you the mass, then you need to use your formula weight equals mass times gravity to calculate the weight. I won't ask you to calculate the buoyant force. I'll ask you to know that the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the displaced water. So I'll probably do something like um, the weight of the displaced water is 50 newtons. Is this object going to float or sink if it has a mass of one kilogram? So you'll need to use that information to um, figure out the weight of the object and compare it to the buoyant force, which I just gave you. You just have to kind of have the realization that the weight of the displaced water is the buoyant force. Uh, particle theory of matter, how does, how does a thermometer work? Um, this is getting at the idea that when particles are moving, the faster they move, the farther they are apart, the lower the bonds that are between them, and therefore the more space that they will take up. And when particles slow down, they're typically closer together because the bonds of attraction between them are stronger, so they take up less space. So when it's warm out, the particles are moving faster and the fluid in the thermometer rises. And when it's cold out, the particles are moving slower and the, and the fluid in the thermometer goes down. 
Um, I don't think, um, and that's, you know, the same goes here, solids, liquids versus gases. Um, I do talk about particle theory of matter at the end of the PowerPoint screencast lesson. So if you haven't watched that yet, please do. These two things are also out. We won't be doing the lab performance during this unit's evaluation, so we won't be measuring anything. Okay? Um, so remember, on Monday for Form C and D, and these dates are, you know, obsolete now. So for on Monday for Form C and D, you will be bringing your own calculator, your formula card. There's the units. There's the dimensions. Um, and bring pens and pencils, okay? And um, that's pretty much it. I probably should tell you that there, well, I mean, the, the test itself is going to have uh, multiple choice questions. It's going to have a bunch of objective stuff like true, false, fill in the blank, matching even. There's probably three to five longer answer questions. Those are typically like where I ask you to compare, like, you know, how, how are mass and weight related? Um, you know, compare and contrast adhesion and cohesion, you know, typically terms that kind of go together, something like that. And then uh, anywhere from six to eight problems to solve. Okay, that'll be it. All right, good luck.